Hi everybody, it's Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Cyberlink Power Director, and here we are in Power Director. One thing I often say about this program is it's a very simple program, and yet it's a very deep program. As, as deep as you want to dig, you're going to keep finding more and more advanced tools in it. One of the most advanced features in Power Director is something called Particles. The program comes with a big library of particles here in the particle room. In a variety of categories, some of these are kind of mystical and magical. Some of them look like falling leaves. Some of them include backgrounds. These with black backgrounds can be overlaid onto your videos. There's a hailstorm, there's a rainstorm, there's a snowstorm. You can place that right over your video and give yourself a snowstorm in July if you'd like. You can modify any one of the particles by selecting it and going up here to the Modify Selected Particle button at the top of the room. Or you can create a particle from scratch and we're going to do that. When I click on create a new particle it opens up immediately a library of particles that are already included with the program now you can use your own custom particles of course if you do I highly recommend you use pings PNG files with transparent backgrounds that way they're not coming in square they're not coming in with a white background if I select the soccer ball I'm getting a ball I'm not getting the white background as I would if I were to use like a JPEG file so let's choose something we can see very easily and I'm going to choose this little bullseye here as my object or as my particle and when I add it you see that the particle actually gets reproduced several times in the particle designer this is called an emitter and the emitter is actually generating little clones of our particle now the emitter has different shapes. You can see the emit method here. Right now it's set to point, which means that all of the little duplicates here, all of the particles are coming from that single point. And we can widen that point if we want or narrow it. We can change the direction of it by grabbing the middle here and changing the rotation of it or the placement of it any way we want. We could also have a line, in which case the particles would more like look like rain. For instance, they would fall from a row rather than from a single point. There's a circle in which they all spread out around the circle. There's a mask in which a mask area, the objects are coming from behind a hidden mask. We'll stick with point for now. Uh, by the way, if I'm just gonna scroll down here to the bottom of the column, you can see that by default, the objects fade in and fade out as they appear. So they kind of ghost in and ghost out. And then you can choose a number of modifications for how these particles behave. Right now it's in bubble mode by default, which means that they float away like bubbles, but you can put them in ball mode, in which case when they hit the edge of the screen, they actually bounce back again. Swing and scale and blink and spring, you can see they each have different personalities. I kind of like scale here because now we're seeing our objects kind of floating out like bubbles and they change scale. They go from large to small as they float out there, but we can continue to customize how they behave. There is our particle. We can choose the emit rate, which is how many of the particles are being generated by our emitter. The maximum count, how many of them appear on screen at a given time. The higher we make that, the more of these particles we're going to see. The lifespan, do they appear briefly and disappear or do they last a long time? The life variation, and there's also size and size variation. This is so that it looks a little more random. Not every single particle that comes from the emitter will look exactly the same. Some will be larger, some will be smaller, and some will disappear quickly and some will last a long time if we set the variations. There are rotations. Now in our case, we're using little round balls, so we won't see it. If we're using other objects, say musical notes or something that has its definite shape to it, we'll see it rotating. You can set that to and rotate variations. And if you're working in a 3D project, you can even enable 3D depth, in which case the emitter is not just going to release these things or not just going to emit these particles up and down, but also toward the viewer and further away from the viewer too. There are color settings. Generally, I don't mess with the color settings because it changes you can see if I were to enable color, it actually changes some of the characteristics of the emitters or the particles themselves. And I don't like to do that. I kind of like the objects that I have. So all of these settings here control how the emitter and how much the emitter releases particles and what shapes and sizes and how they behave. Once you've selected all of those, you can select a motion path for the emitter itself. 
So this is, for instance, a swirly path. And as you can see, if I scrub through here, my emitter is going to move along that path and it's going to be releasing little particles as it goes along the path. You can go up and down, straight up and down. Uh, you can do swirly, swoopy, more square, going left to right, right to left. Now you can add as many particles as you want to a given particle design. So in other words, if I were to click up here, I can select yet another object or another particle and I can add it and I can apply entirely different characteristics to it. I can add a background to the entire piece or I can leave it transparent so that I can overlay it onto my video. Once I'm done, I can save it under a name. Let's call this balloons and it becomes saved. It'll be in my custom area here in my room. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with a particle designer and you can create some pretty magical images either working with the existing particles that come with the program or by creating your own. A very advanced feature, a very advanced tool here in CyberLink PowerDirector. If you want to know more about all these advanced tools or any tools in the program, check out the tips and tutorials we have at moviepix.com. And if you want to know everything about CyberLink PowerDirector, the moviepix.com guide to CyberLink PowerDirector Ultimate is your ultimate guide and that's available from amazon.com. I'm the author Steve Grizzetti. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again real soon.